Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to talk to you for a minute about thyroid autoantibodies and the risk of miscarriage in preterm birth. There's been some very interesting information on this recently, and why I'm doing this is a lot of women that come see me that are suffering with low thyroid symptoms, in their history, they have some problems with miscarriages or maybe even have uh, premature births. Some people can't get pregnant, they can't you know, uh, implant a fetus, they can't carry it to term. And there's been some really interesting information come out over the last year or so about the clear association between thyroid antibodies and the risk of miscarriage and preterm birth. In fact, a recent study showed that if you've got TPO antibodies, right? TPO antibodies, which is one of the antibodies that, it, that can be high when you have Hashimoto's, if you've got TPO antibodies, it can increase the risk of miscarriage and preterm birth by two to three times in people that are affected by it. Now that is huge news. Now what they're not clear about, and I'm going to explain this to you, is exactly why would that be? Well there's two essential reasons. One is if you have TPO antibodies and you're a mom, right, that means you have a real risk for becoming hypothyroid. So if you don't understand what Hashimoto's is, here's what it is. Your immune system targets your thyroid gland and basically kills its ability to make thyroid hormones. It actually destroys pieces of your thyroid gland. You lose them and they never come back. Well, over time, you actually become hypothyroid. You can't make enough thyroid hormones. Well, being hypothyroid is a huge risk in pregnancy, and that in itself could cause you to not be able to carry a baby to term. So there's that. Now, another thing that can happen is if you've got TPO antibodies, hey, guess what? You have an autoimmune condition. So you could have other autoimmune conditions, which is really all just the same autoimmune condition. You could have antiphospholipid syndrome. You could have a bunch of other things. So that when you try to carry the baby to term, your immune system actually attacks the developing fetus, and that's why you have a miscarriage and you can't take it to term. Okay? So there's two different reasons why that might be happening. But what I find really interesting is when you start reading the papers about this, they start saying, well, there's no reason to screen healthy women who are thinking about getting pregnant. Now, think about it, right? There's no reason to screen healthy women who are thinking about getting pregnant for, for Hashimoto's. That's a huge mistake. How do you know they've got Hashimoto's? A lot of women are walking around right now without overt low thyroid symptoms of depression, constipation, hair loss, brain fog. There's a lot of them walking around like that because Hashimoto's can present in a lot of different ways. They're walking around feeling good, but they've actually got Hashimoto's. They've got the process happening. And to just blanket say, well, they don't need to be screened, I think that's a real, that's a huge mistake. Okay? Now, one of the other things that have been going on in the research is they've been asking, okay, well, is there any kind of a treatment that we can do for these women that have Hashimoto's, and will it work? Well, what some studies have shown, if you give a woman who's got Hashimoto's levothyroxine during pregnancy, you know, one of the medications, then it could have a pretty good outcome. But that's only if her risk was the, the, you know, her risk of miscarriage was because she was going to be hypothyroid, not because of that other reason where she has a heightened state of autoimmunity. So you know, what's, the, what's the takeaway message for all this? Well, I'll tell you a couple things. Number one, if you've got a history of miscarriages, whether you've got low thyroid symptoms or not, you need to be checked for Hashimoto's. Okay? You need to run a TPO antibodies and a TGB antibodies. The problem is most doctors aren't going to want to run it unless you've got an elevated TSH, or you've got other these high, you've got some of these hypothyroid symptoms like depression, constipation, hair loss, weight gain, even though you don't eat much and exercise, uh, high cholesterol, which is actually a sign of uh, low thyroid. You're going to have difficulty. You're going to have to be a real advocate for yourself, or you're going to have to find someone who understands that. Hey, I should probably check somebody for this. It's not a crime to run a test on someone and see if they've got this problem. Um, the other thing that you're going to find, another reason I'm doing this post, is that. If you have any low thyroid symptoms, my gosh, you've got to get checked for Hashimoto's because it's the number one cause of low thyroid in America. And the number of women that I see walking through my door that are contacting me every week that have miscarriages, infertility, preterm births, <laughs> that also have low thyroid symptoms is staggering. I mean, it will absolutely floor you if, if you if you can look at the emails that I get. So you really got to be an advocate for yourself and realize that, number one, if you've got Hashimoto's, you're going to be at risk for being having a hard time um, conceiving and carrying a pregnancy to term. So you got to find someone who understands Hashimoto's from a functional perspective and knows what to look for, right? What triggers Hashimoto's, what perpetuates, and what you can do without drugs to calm everything down. And that'll be, that'll be crucial and key for you being able to have um, a healthy pregnancy and be able to avoid the risks of miscarriage and preterm birth that are clearly, clearly connected to having thyroid autoimmunity.